Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Barbara Ruther and I'm the Director of Arts and Education at Morris Arts. We're so happy to welcome you today to our third virtual arts and education showcase. Um, and I, we wanna thank you for taking the time, making the time to be with us today. Whether you're a, an administrator or a teacher or a parent volunteer for your school, we wanna thank you for all the work you do, fundraising, advocating for the arts, and selecting great programs for your students. Your advocacy means the world. It really makes a difference and we're very proud to be your partners. Uh, today, we can't wait to share what innovative things uh, the artists that we work with have been up to. Just as teachers and students and parents have had to adjust to virtual learning, uh, so too our artists have had to reinvent their work, turning their, uh, their homes into studios and broadcasting from, from them. So we're, we're very eager to show you what they've been working on. Please know that Morris Arts is here for your school as a resource as we continue to navigate this very challenging year. Um, if you have questions or you wanna have deeper conversations about any of the work you've seen, uh, please reach out to us, we're here for you. Um, we're going to be recording today's showcase and we'll be posting it afterward on the Morris Arts website www.marisarts.org. Uh, during uh, the presentations today, we will be posting each artist's um, contact information in the chat section. And when we post this online later, we'll have contact information for each of the artists in, that you'll be seeing today. Uh, if you have questions during the presentations today, please use the Q&A section to post your question there and, and the artists will see those or will relay those to the artists. And um, that, with that being said, we're going to get started. I'm going to start by sharing my screen so that I can introduce you to the lineup for today. Um, here we go. And the first artist that was, we will be seeing today is Kevin O'Keefe performing Circus uh, from Circus Minimus. Next up will be Kit from Kit's Interactive Theater. Uh, he, uh, she'll be followed by artist Dan Fenelon. Next up will be Beth and Scott, and we'll be concluding today's presentation with uh, Tracy Fox and stop motion animation. Um, I'm going to talk to you now about our first artist and introduce him. His name is Kevin O'Keefe, and the name of his program is Circus Minimus. Many schools have had Kevin in to do artist residency programs, but today he's going to spotlight the one man circus in a suitcase, which delights and inspires assembly audiences to practice compassion and follow their dreams. An entire cast of circus performers emerge from a small suitcase, but the most important characters come from the audience as chosen members become part of the action. Each show is a dialogue between the audience and the characters a lighthearted collaboration that allows the entire school to run away and join the circus and still be back in time for lunch. The show comes with a curriculum guide for teachers to integrate the circus back into their classrooms. And with that being said, uh, please welcome Kevin O'Keefe with Circus Minimus. Hello, Barbara Ruther from Morris Arts. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you, Tom Werder for having me. Um, thanks also, Barbara, for putting up that, uh, that picture that I don't see often enough of me nose to nose with a child in India. I'm lucky enough to get to go there. Uh, I've been there six times and I go there frequently to train teachers to perform and to work with social workers uh, with kids that are uh, in group homes there. And I hope to get to return there someday soon uh, post COVID. And also maybe get to ch uh, get a chance to also connect again with my dear friends in the Morris Arts community. I've been doing circus down there uh, for about 20, 25 years now. And uh, it's one of the great joys of my life. And um, I'm, I'm proud to be on this uh, roster of terrific artists that you have for, for your uh, community. You know, um, the image, the main image of poetry and of dream connection with kids and their dreams in Circus Minimus, the one man circus in a suitcase, is a feather falling from the sky, from the burning breast of the fire bird. And it gets picked up by, uh, in this instance, uh, me, 
but it's uh, a metaphor that's good for my life and also uh, hopes to inspire other kids to follow their dreams, um, work hard, have a great time uh, doing it like I have. So um, today we'll be seeing a encore presentation, a masterpiece circus, if you will, uh, from the Bardavon Opera House. It's been there for 110 years. FDR and Tom Thumb both graced the stage at one point. This is a professionally shot and edited video under the great lights at the Bardavon Opera House. So now this masterpiece theater edition of Circus in a Suitcase. Please take it away, Mr. Tom Werder. <clears throat> We're gonna walk into the into the Bardavon Theater now. Come right this way, sir. I'll, I'll help you out. Come right this way. All right, people. It's okay. It's all right. I've got this under control. Irreverent. Did I wake you, sir? I'm so sorry. He's reverent. He's uh, not too tall and he's not too short. He's just right. He's a crack up. What can I say? He's a very funny guy. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Fitzpatrick, ringmaster. I like that uh, Steve Fitzpatrick, ringmaster guy. We've got a bit of a problem here at the circus. It's called a runaway. It's the second time I've seen Circus Metamus, and I thought it was better than the last time. This show appeals to kids of all ages. It's a lot of fun, and it involves everyone in the audience. Oh. Oh, sir. He really connects with children. Now watch carefully, Alison, on account of one, two, three! You're unbelievable! <laughs> Them, they'll be a part of the Circus Minimus Sideshow, completely unrecognizable. The Siamese twins. Yes, born together at birth, separated by science, brought back together through the magic of circus technology. Won't you welcome Siegfried and Roy, ladies and gentlemen? You see, ladies and gentlemen, two bodies, one brain. Unfortunately, Siegfried got the worst of that deal. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think I smell fire. And if there's one thing I can't tolerate here at the Bardabon Opera House, it's the chance of a fire. I'm so sorry, but I've got to put it out right... Oh my gosh, I'm... I'm so sorry, um... One in the face? Yes! Yeah. Do you insist? Yes! Yeah. Well, if you insist. It's a lot of fun for the adults. Half the fun is watching the kids' reaction. Got a whole lot of those. Okay, now, what we're gonna do, Gabrielle, is very difficult. Okay, you're gonna take the balloon, you're gonna wrap it around, we're gonna make some puppies. <laughs> Gabriel, the balloon. Turn and face the audience, please. Feel that. Now don't tell me that is not silky smooth. Feel that on your neck. Just go like this, Ariel. Yeah, yeah, nice. Silky smooth. All right. On the count of three, you'll jump and fall into the hypnotic state. Are you ready? One. Two, just. Oh, no, no, 
no, I'm not a performer. Uh-uh. I'm just the head usher here at the theater. See? I don't... I, I don't know, no. I'm too shy. Hello? The Bombolini. Tito. Hey, Tito. Hey, Guido. Guido, Tito, Guido, Nino, Tito, Guido, Nino, Tito, Guido. Hey! I happen to like the Bombolinis, particularly Tony and Tony too. The newest member of the Bombolini family, Tony Bombolini. And he's a twin brother, Tony too. If you have the spirit of adventure and you'd like to run away and join the circus right now, raise your hand in the air. The new ringmaster must have the new ringmaster hat. Yes! Circus Minimus is now Circus Maximus! We're going on our tour now of the big city! Something they'll remember for the rest of their lives. They may forget their fourth grade teacher's name, but they'll remember Kevin O'Keefe, and they'll remember being in the circus at the bar tomorrow. Steve Fitzpatrick! I highly recommend him to anybody that needs a good laugh. He's great, he's silly, he's stupid, he's fun, he's kooky, and he's uh, a blast to work with. See ya! Thank you, Mr. Tom Werder. That was delightful to revisit that uh, Circus in a Suitcase show, which is the set with it is uh, standing behind me right now. But I wanted to offer another thing. Uh, COVID, I've been doing this uh, lovely um, juggling workshop for parents and kids together or for teachers and kids together or for kids and kids together. And um, I've been combining juggling and also recycling, reusing plastic bags. Miss Barbara Ruther or Tom, could you put up that uh, lovely uh, PDF that you recently made for me, giving me the benefits of uh, juggling? You see folks, um, juggling, it's been scientifically proven that it helps improve coordination and reflexes. If for instance, any of your kids are interested in oh, something that I was big, a big fan of when I was younger and still today am, called sports, uh, juggling is a very useful activity to develop those eye-hand, important eye-hand coordinations. Uh, when I was a kid, it was football, baseball, basketball, tennis, swimming in the summer, um, any number of those sports and others can all benefit by learning how to become a better juggler. So it's not just that we're uh, teaching people to juggle or to, re to reuse uh, plastic bags, but we're also teaching them how to more integrate that brain learning back into their lives. Um, a great uh, thing going on in this workshop as well is the, is the benefit, especially this year, of social and emotional learning. I know that that's a, a paramount importance uh, in the you know, K to eight range of kids and uh, juggling uh, can do that um, as the kids connect to one another via partner juggling or their parent via partner juggling or their teacher via partner juggling, but also then they can also um, go at their own speed, their own range for their solo juggling. And in the course of a one hour workshop in baggling, which is what we call this juggling with bags, um, in the course of that one hour workshop from second grade up, I can almost guarantee that everybody will be able to juggle three uh, bags three scarves at the end of it. Um, see, some of the other things that uh, juggling can help with is enhancing visual tracking skills and math uh, progressions. Um, and it's a great way for parents and kids to connect. Like if you, if you wanna have a parent kid fun night and you'd like to have me at your school, this is something that I've done all over the country. And it's a, it's a great way to get the, uh, the community up, engaged, becoming lifelong learners, demonstrating that for the younger generation and for the younger generation to see that the older generation can learn a few new tricks. So uh, thank you very much for being a part of this virtual showcase. And uh, I look forward to meeting you in reality very soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thanks so much, Kevin. That was wonderful. We really enjoyed learning about that and watching uh, One Man's uh, Circus in a Suitcase. That was terrific.
I'd now like to uh, share my screen again so that I can welcome our next performer and her name, uh, the name of her program rather is Kit's Interactive Theater. Kit, Kitty Jones, a professional actress from New York City, writes, chore choreographs, produces and performs all of her materials for Kit's Interactive Theater. Her virtual shows keep students engaged with their high level of energy and through the use of the, her signature uh, audience participation. Where applicable, prop lists are available so that students can make or gather props from items found in the home. And for added fun and excitement, and she's really done this so well, um, your school's program can be personalized to feature the school's teachers and administrators. Um, Kit has six virtual programs available for the 2020-2021 school year. And uh, that being said, please welcome uh, Kitty Jones. Well, thank you, Barbara, so much. Thank you for having the showcase for us. And for those of you watching at home, we really appreciate it. And Kevin, that was a really neat presentation. Um, I'm Kitty from Kits Interactive Theater. For the last 25 years, I've been performing my interactive theater shows live. I have 16 different programs, and as Barbara mentioned, six of them now are available virtually. Those programs are The American Revolution, Journey of an Irish Immigrant, Women's Rights, The Mysteries of Ancient Egypt, Mother Nature, and Cinderella's Fairy Godmother. The shows are pre-recorded and they are broken down into two to three segments. Now, some schools watch the segments back to back straight through, and some teachers prefer to watch different segments on different days so that they can have class discussion about the events that just transpired in the show. For instance, let us say fifth graders are studying immigration. So on the day where they wanna talk about oceanic travel, that's the day they watch part two, or if they want to talk about Ellis Island, well, that would be the day they watch part three. It's very flexible and it's terrific in that way. Now, for those of you who have had me year after year at your school, or if you've never had me, uh, you know, or I will tell you that audience participation and interaction is the heart of my show. So when we had to transition virtually, my challenge was how do I keep interaction in a virtual format? How do I keep it spontaneous? And I think I figured out how. So I've done over 20 virtual bookings and the feedback I'm getting is great. So I'm gonna share with you now an overview of what I do. And so you can sort of see how I do it. Thanks. Kids Interactive Theater presents Kids Virtual Experiences History, Music, Dance, Humor with shows ranging from ancient Egypt to women's rights. My shows are essentially one-act plays that weave historical events into fun, engaging stories. They're chock full of facts and information and because they're virtual, I can add all kinds of images, music, graphics, and text to enhance learning even more. So I left the Amazon at once. I flew right through the night. I skipped a little bit, but trust me, I got tiresome when low. I came upon a beautiful pond. You know the one I mean, the one just on the outskirts of your town? Oh my goodness, it was surrounded by plants, brown cattails, purple pickle weeds, Pink blue stripe? Oh, actually, that's a little reason. Well, there are programs for younger students. Everyone, repeat after me. We bounce very high. We bounce very high. We bounce very small. We bounce very small. We bounce very high. We bounce very high. Then we bounce not at all. Then we bounce not at all. And we can have a score as we can. Good Cinderella, tiny, tiny. And if you stay very small and very quiet, the giant will not see you. 
So you run into things and go, I think so. He could be tiny now. He could. Oh, there he goes. Good. Very well. Pixie's in there. An older student. I left and I was going down the street and suddenly while I'm traveling on the street, watching the horse drawing fire trucks galloping by, I cannot imagine what what is happening. So I go running and I turn the corner. No, 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 oh my word, my building is on fire. Oh, oh, no. Plus, there's my signature period dance in every production where viewers are invited to join in. Perfect. Then we're going to put toes in front like this. Toes, 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 toes. You try it. Good. And marvelous. Good and all circle. Yeah. Reaching up in the stars, we reach. Good. Other way. Oh, correct. And down. Other way. One more time. Oh, it's so good. And the best part is, they're interactive. Anyone who wants to can play along from wherever they're watching. But wait, Jack, we need some helpers, do we not? We do. I want everyone right now to pick up your pillowcases, hold them right up under your chin, just like that. Oh, see how well she's doing it? She's excellent, good girl. Everyone, this is the malt that lay in the house that Jack built. Now, malt is so if anyone ever goes up into the sand dunes, what do the crabs do? This is our time to pick up our massive crab claws if you have one. If not, you can use your hands. The crabs will raise their crab claws in the air like this and they begin to pinch. And I know not if you've ever been pinched by a crab, <laughs> but trust me when I tell you, it hurts. Prop lists are available so students can play along with the show. They're made from items found around the home. And to make it even more exciting for the students, I can put their teachers in the movie. I would send the teachers a brief action list and a little demonstration video they can use for guidance. They do those actions and capture them on their cell phones, text them to me, and I edit them right into the movie. Next, you simply cry out, the British and the colonists. The British and the colonists. And we all know who won that war. Was it the French and the Native Americans or the British and the colonists? Go ahead. Shout it out. The British and the colonists! That's it. I heard it. Good job. The British and the... Recording the videos for Kit's Interactive Theater is super easy. Imagine the fun they'll have when someone they know appears in the video. Another woman at the convention was Mrs. Keener. She was a milliner, meaning she made ladies' hats. Uh, Mrs. Kinema, I have to ask you, did your husband help you make the hats? Did he, did he cut the cloth? Did he stitch the hats? Did he take them to market? Did he do anything to help make those hats that you sold? No, he did nothing. Yeah, and the great part about these being pre-recorded is you have access to them for as long as you need. So if your schedule changes, and goodness knows in this environment, things are changing all the time, you can watch it whenever it works for you. It's so flexible. And a great option would be after they view the presentation, they do a live follow-up virtual Q&A meet with the character herself. I am not a character, I am the queen. And I recognize you now. Your father brought me these beads. I'm going to reward him handsomely. So in a live Q&A session, I talk to the students as though they're in my realm, in my world. And I had teachers after a Zoom meeting with fifth graders, tell me the fifth graders asked them if I was a real Egyptian queen. It's all in their imagination. Let Kids Interactive Theater spark the imagination in your students today. Okay, so Barbara, thank you so much for your wonderful cameo in the movie. That was fantastic. I hope it was fun to do and really simple. Um, when, uh, when I tell PTAs and principals that I can put the teachers in the show, 
everybody gets very excited and the teachers so far who have done it have had a great time and the kids love seeing their teachers appear. Um, but one question I do get is, do we have to put the teachers in? And absolutely not. The programs are complete just as they are. I have professional actor friends of mine who are all the participants in it. So it's not as though there's going to be a hole in the, in the film where somebody would be dropped in. Um, and I know teachers right now have a lot on their plate. So if it's not a good fit this week when we're trying to produce it, we don't have to include them. Or some schools can have one clip, one, the principal does one clip. That's fine too, whatever works. So um, if there are no questions and I don't see any, Barbara, thank you so much for everything. Everybody uh, enjoy the uh, performers after me. They're a talented group and thank you so much. Thank you, Kitty. Thank you so much for joining us today. That was fantastic. And it was absolutely a pleasure to send in a video, uh, to send in a, a clip from my iPhone. Very simple, very easy. And you made me part of the show. I'm very impressed. Um, thank you. Uh, I'd like to introduce our next artist now. And let me just share my screen to do that. Just, it'll just take a second. Here we go. Um, and this artist is Dan Fenelon. Dan's been working with Morris Arts for many years, not only as a teaching artist and um, a residency artist, but also doing a lot of public and community art. His distinctive style of artwork can be seen on commercial buildings, in schools, in galleries, on clothing, and in private collections throughout the US. Also known as Mr. Dan to his younger students, he brings his genuine enthusiasm, love of teaching, and his understanding of the importance of the process to each class. Mr. Dan understands that every student will learn in their own unique way. His reputation as a kind, thoughtful, and creative educator has resulted in hundreds of students being inspired to take risks, be proud of their individuality, and to create art while having fun and learning lifetime skills. Please welcome Mr. Dan, Dan Fenelon. Thanks a lot, Barbara. Um, so I um, am here today, I'm, gonna, I'm showing a, um, an online workshop that I um, have done with the Montclair Art Museum that's been very successful um, with the students. Uh, so what it is, is um, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, set up the slideshow, okay? So, um, you know, so since COVID happened, um, we've had to go online. So I really developed this program specifically for online. Um, it's a puppet and story making workshop, okay? So what I do is I bring the kids through every phase of making a puppet show from um, developing stories, writing, doing storyboards, doing character development, making scenes for the um, puppet show. And actually at the end of the session, each student performs their own puppet show. Um, all the materials are, um, are recycled materials, so you can find them around the house, or I give everybody a list of, um, of uh, supplies that they can you know, order or find around the house. So um, I'm just gonna show you here. Let me get into the program for us here, okay. So um, the objectives are, it develops some um, storytelling skills, um, it increases uh, self-confidence, um, eye-hand skill development, because it's a lot of hands-on working, uh, uh, story, storytelling structure development we do, um, uh, develop uh, measurement skills using mathematics and uh, measuring tools, uh, which I'll get into in a minute, Ex and explore, um, explore history in the context of folktales, okay? So really what I do is I first introduce the kids to folktales and legends, and we sort of, um, you know, I have videos, um, short videos of that. And then we talk and kind of analyze the folk tales and what the um, moral, morals of the story are in the beginning, middle and end we talk about. And um, we so we set up the structure for how, how they can work. And then um, I have them create storyboards, okay? So uh, they, they sit down, they have to write a storyboard, then we discuss that and um, we do some brainstorming on that and how it's gonna work and what they, what they need, what scenes they're going to need for for the uh, play, what kind of props they're going to have to build, and and then we do character development. Okay, so 
uh, each of the kids draws out a character. We figure out how that's going to um, work as a puppet, okay? And they can build the puppet out of uh, the monster is built out of a, a, a bottle, okay? And, and uh, toilet paper rolls. And then um, the uh, surfer guy is just made out of um, just cardboard and duct tape, okay? And, and then uh, construction paper. So, so there's a lot of that in that. And then um, I teach them about, um, you know, making a set, a design for the set. So it's, it, it can get pretty elaborate. Um, uh, one that I did over the summer from Montclair Art Museum, we, we took a, a really long time to create these sets, okay? So every day we did like, um, we did fish one day, we did the squid one day, we made the box one day. So, so there's like a lot of components to it. Okay. And um, then here, uh, you know, I teach them about proportions. Okay, so how to make the puppet proportionally correct using measurements. Um, so there's a lot of math involved. Uh, you know, so I have a whole um, a whole setup for that, like to to show them. I have examples of of how that works. Okay, and how proportions work. Uh, then uh, we go into the storytelling part of it. Okay, how's how are the um, puppets going to interact on stage? Uh, you know, develop their imagination. They can and um, they can you know develop stories based on that. And then it also helps with their public speaking skills because they're going to have to perform it at the end of um, the session. Okay. Uh, so I just want to show you the setup I have. It's it's um you know professional online studio. I have uh, three different cameras. Okay. I have all uh, uh, professional lights set up so uh, the kids can see. I, I really found that's very. Um, good to have like different ca camera angles so that the kids can really get it on um, the idea and see what's how to build things. Okay. Uh, I use uh, Padlet. Okay. Padlet to create um, inspiration boards and also for uh, kids to post their progress pics so we can analyze them. Um, I give them inspirational art. I post videos on, on the Padlet. So there's a lot of um, fun act activities they can do on their own with the Padlet. Okay. Padlet is like Pinterest for students, okay? Uh, and then I give them, a, you know, a visual supply guide so that they know exactly what supplies they're going to need for the class. I always post that on Padlet for the day so that they know exactly what to have ahead of time before, before we go online um, so they know what, what supplies are, are, um, they're going to need for that day. And then I do a step-by-step -step instruction so we go through the process, every single process of building a puppet and our, our stage or our prop, whatever we're working on that day. Um, and then I let them kind of take over. So it doesn't have to be a bird. It can be another um, animal, anything they, they want. They, so I give them the basic templates to work with and then they can build from there. And um, you know, the whole process is about art fostering creativity and ingenuity. Uh, so that's the whole basis behind the program. And the program um, is available for grades two through five, um, but I can adapt it for other kids too. And I can adapt the length of the, the program. It doesn't have to be as elaborate as a, as a full um, puppet show. So there's different levels to it, you know, so it could go from one to two weeks. And that is the, um, that is the whole dynamic behind that. Okay, I have one of my puppets here, my surf guy puppet, okay. so. So the kids have a lot of fun. They really love working on it. Um, we, you know, it's really fun. And uh, and then here's one of my sets. Okay, there's, these are one of the sets that, that there it is, all completed. Okay, so that is it. That is that is fantastic, Dan. Those look wonderful. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and the kids really, really enjoy it. I've gotten a lot of really good feedback from parents. Oh, they look terrific. I really love that. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for joining and being with us today. All right, um, great. Have a good day, everybody. Great fans of your work. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. That's great. Um, I'm going to share my screen again right now to introduce our next artist uh, coming up. And that team is the very talented team of Beth and Scott. Uh, they are a husband and wife team of award winning singer songwriters and arts and education specialists specializing in social emotional learning. Um, and since 1993, Beth and Scott have performed thousands of cultural arts programs, including school assemblies, camp, and library programs, concerts, and interactive workshops for children. Their virtual programs include Mindfulness Matters, Mindfulness in Motion, 
and singing about learning. Please welcome Beth and Scott. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. And thank you, Tom, and all of the other artists. I am learning so much and enjoying uh, while we get ready to participate. This is a fantastic event. We're coming to you from our home in Yorktown Heights, New York. And uh, yes, it is an honor to be part of this uh, showcase. We've been with the Morris Arts Council for over 20 years, providing music and movement programs and uh, a songwriting workshop. So it's great to be a part of this today. Well, speaking of songwriting workshops, Beth, uh, the room that we're in right now is where we do songwriting workshops on the Zoom platform or the Google Classroom platform, depending upon what the school needs. And we have been lucky enough to write 350 songs uh, with kids over the years. And this is a program that really helps support ELA uh, as well as anything else that the, that the students are studying because we have written songs about the digestive system, about American history, and especially about social emotional learning, one of our favorite topics. Absolutely. And it's a great way to teach kids how to uh, create and have that self expression and to work collaboratively. And that's been true in the classroom and now online um, to be very active participants in the arts. Now, we've also been doing workshops in mindfulness for students, uh, for staff development, for teachers, and even for parents. I'm teaching yoga uh, between us. We have 40 years of yoga practice and, and teaching and meditation. And so during these rather uncertain times uh, to be lowering everybody's stress levels with mm. those kinds of offerings uh, has been really important. Yeah, as a matter of fact, every one of our shows really has an opportunity now for, for kids and teachers too, to, to get centered, to get focused because not only are sh our shows full of great songs and dancing around and movement, but we have to teach kids how to be with the arts in a very focused way to teach them how to be a great audience and teach them how to learn how to be passionate learners. That's right. And with adults, when we're more regulated ourselves, then we're going to pass that sense of calm on to the kids. Now, we are still doing our wonderful assembly programs yeah. that's happening downstairs and um, we are using a special platform for that right scott do you want to tell everybody about vimeo yeah yeah what what, what we discovered is that vimeo live stream has a wonderful uh program uh, application program for embedding um our shows on our website and you'll see that in just a moment and the great thing about vimeo is that we can um stream out to as much as eighty thousand screens simultaneously now most of your schools are not that large, I don't think. But uh, the point is, is that if if you have to switch to home and everybody is watching on their own Chromebook, we can handle it. And we've got all of the back end work done uh, because sometimes these broadcast uh, platforms can get overloaded. Right. But with this, it's as simple as a password and a click and everybody's in and the kids can even chat with us during the show. There's a little chat feature that you'll see. So all of our programs are still on the website. We do, again, mindfulness, uh, we do nutrition, we do social emotional learning. Yeah. And um, we're gonna show you some clips from uh, some of these different shows that we've been doing from yeah. pre-K kids all the way up through fifth grade, just and, little snippets. And stay tuned because we are going to tell you something really cool. We are now working with one of the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned for that. So let's go to our website and we'll show you what it looks like. And you go bananas, go go bananas, go bananas, go go bananas. <laughs> <laughs> well, after going bananas, let's take a couple of deep breaths with my breathing ball. Ready? Big breath in, slow breath out. Big breath in, and slow breath out. That feels good. One more time. Fifth 
50,000 thoughts a day. How like, many? 50,000. Like, oh, I don't know if I want to go to school. And, oh, I wonder who'll be on the, the bus next to me. And what's for breakfast? And, oh, man, I really liked that show last night. And I, I wish I could get a red bike instead of a blue bike. And, oh, my goodness, I wonder if I'll ever meet a talking aunt. And next thing you know, we've got so much going on that our head, our brain isn't clear anymore. And it's hard for it to make good choices. Hey, little ant, down in the crack, can you hear me? Can you talk back? See my shoe? Can you see that? Well, now it's gonna squish you flat. Oh, please, oh, please, do not squish me. Change your mind and let me be, cause I'm on my way with the crumb of pie. So please, oh, please don't make me die. Come on, kid, have a heart. But everyone knows that ants can't feel. Well, guess what, everybody? It's time for another Turn and Talk, this time about kindness. So for the next two minutes, turn to that friend, teacher, parent, or even stuffed animal and discuss what are some ways that you can be kind. Cover your cough, cover your cough. Use your elbow, not your hand. Cover your cough and show your care. Coughing can spread germs into the air. I ran all the way home just to fetch my shovel. Then I ran back as fast as I could. Oh, hoo, hoo. Once upon a time in a nursery rhyme, there were these three bears. Cha, cha, cha. Sit down be silent. Breathe softly. did such a great job focusing in that song. Mm. Beth, I'm curious. What emotion, what feeling did you have while we were singing that song? Oh, well, I think I was joyful because mm -hmm. I love to sing and I love to hear you play the guitar. Mm. And I think what I'm noticing now is I'm just more relaxed. Oh. I almost felt a little sleepy because sometimes our body and our brain confuses relaxed with sleepy. Mm. That's the only time we do relax is when we're going to bed. <laughs> now, boys and girls and teachers, too, we all like being calm. That's a great way, as Beth said, to make choices and be kind. But other emotions are okay, too. In fact, all of our emotions are okay. And we all have them at different times. You know, some people might have been bored during that song, right? Raise your hand if you were maybe a little... Well, who was calm, right? And yeah. then who was maybe a little bored? Be honest. Oh, you were bored. That makes yeah, sense. Because some of us like faster music that yeah. we can move to. I got an idea. Who was a little sad during that song? Was oh, anybody sad? Because slow music sometimes can make yeah. us feel a little sad, right? I understand that. Those yeah. are all feelings that we can have that happen during those songs. And isn't it interesting that it's the same song, but it, we have different feelings about it depending on what's happening in our day. Now, if we're feeling bored or tired, sleepy or sad, yeah. then sometimes maybe a slow song and slow breathing isn't the right choice. We might need something that's going to wake us up a little bit. Shake and freeze. Shake and freeze. Shake and freeze. Shake and freeze. Two times, one, two, two times, one, two, five, one, two, three, four, five.
Well, we are back and we hope that you enjoyed that. Yes. And, uh, you know, we are trying to keep everybody a little more active uh, as kids are at being asked to sit in front of the screens, as we're all being asked to sit in front of these screens. Um, one of the hallmarks of, of Beth and Scott is to get up and move. So um, we are still inviting children's, children and adults to be doing that, as you saw from the clips. Now, before we left to go that, I did drop a little bit of a bombshell that we're going to be working with one of the Beatles. So I do think that it's probably a good idea for me to explain that. Let me go back to uh, our thing here and show you right. this. So we have been working with a, a wonderful nonprofit organization called The Theater Within. And in conjunction with them and Yoko Ono, uh, we are premiering something called the John Lennon Real Love Project, which is uh, now an online music and songwriting program that is actually funded by Theater Within. Yep. So very briefly, schools need to apply for this because it is a free program. Uh, it is meant to serve especially schools that are in need and don't have a lot of arts programs. So there is an opportunity for you if you are not a school that's in need to still apply, but also to uh, participate by donating some funds to some schools around the country that are referring people who might yeah. need this. And the idea is to uh, teach children about John Lennon's work, his early influences, his beautiful music, and of course, his timeless messages of peace and love and social justice. And here's the kicker. Uh, we have gotten permission from Yoko to uh, use John Lennon's song called Real Love and we will be recording the kids, very much how Kitty is using uh, cell phones to record the teachers. We're gonna be using the same kind of technology to record the kids to sing along with John. Uh, so in the end, every school, every child will have a copy of Real Love with John singing and playing, as well as them singing along. And they'll be creating original lyrics. So uh, we're excited to share that. That is pretty cool. <laughs> so once again, we'd like to thank Tom Werder, Barbara Ruther, and everybody at Morris Arts Council, but most of all to thank you. Um, you know, the arts are such an important part of creating the whole child. And uh, we don't want that to get lost in this uh, current crisis. So thank you, Barbara and Tom, for spreading the good word and giving us this opportunity. And thank you to all the other artists as well. Oh, thank you, thank you both. Thanks, Beth and Scott, for joining us today. That was really wonderful. We really appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. Uh, I just wanted to before, are we still on? Not not yet. No, you're off. Okay. But if, if you'd like to speak, you may. Yes, you just don't okay. have the screen. Yeah, I just, you know, you had asked us what was a question that people ask us all the time. And the, the number one is probably, do you guys get along off stage? the way that you get along on stage. <laughs> and the truth is, is, yes, most of the time, but things always have to be worked out. And a lot of that is in our shows and how people uh, can talk to one another and make relationships even better. Thanks again. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. That was great. Um, I'm going to introduce our next performer now. Um, uh, next up is, I'm gonna share my screen to do that. That'll just take a second to bring this wonderful program up. Um, and well, that is not the one that I was anticipating. Hold on one second. Um, let me just try that one more time. Okay. And forgive me for the delay. This is me learning as I'm doing. Uh, we want to welcome now Tracy Fox with Stop Motion Animation. Uh, Tracy is a new teaching artist with us and she has just hit the ground running, developing a program that um, she expected to do in schools, but she has been doing virtually and they've been phenomenal. Uh, she empowers students of all ages to become creators and contributors and not just consumers of digital information. The students, regardless of their artistic confidence, become stop motion animators and create movies inspired by their own voice, words, and writing. In a series of workshops, students expand their reporting, storytelling, and literacy skills and have fun with hands on art making. Please welcome Tracy Fox. 
Uh, hi, Barbara. Thank you. And thank you, Tom. Thanks to Morris Arts for having me. Really happy to be part of the showcase. Um, I've been a residency teacher for about five years with Stop Motion. Uh, but before that, I was actually in the same role that you're in today, reviewing artists and programs to bring to our school. So I want to thank you in advance for your time, because I know you're here if, because you value <clears throat> education, um, art experiences for students. So I want to thank you for bringing them to your students. Uh, my stop motion animation program, as Barbara said, empowers students to find their voice and share ideas. And your students will explore their age appropriate storytelling and literacy skills plus they'll have a lot of fun. And I'm proud that I'm teaching them to be creators, not just consumers of digital media, which is more important than ever. On the surface, I teach stop motion animation, which is the combination of single pictures that when you play them together, present the idea of movement to our eyes. Um, and it's really an accessible form for all ages to tell stories. Um, the artistic kids are totally in the minute I start telling them about what we're going to do, the ones that are that feel good about drawing, but there's always at least one student that comes up to me and says, I can't draw, I can't do this. And I said, it's don't worry, because we're drawing to plan and then you can cut things out and it's really about the movement. Um, and then very quickly, they are just as immersed as any of the other students in the classroom. Um, so the stories they bring to life connect the students and engage the classmates in conversation after they share the movies, and it builds conversations and enhances the social emotional connection, even in the virtual environment. So let me show you some of their movies. Rainbows. It's the most beautiful thing seen and it doesn't come often. It has many colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Clip, clap, click, clap. Unicorns go down the rainbow. As it glows, rainbows. Earthquake. Tables move, shells fall, and plates shatter. While others wonder, what's the matter? Underneath the surface, people worry. While earthquakes can be deadly, this one decides to stop and be nice for a change. I am going to teach you about a fish living in captivity. First thing, they swim to the left and then swim to the right. After that, they make bubbles. And they also like to eat too. Hi, my name is Alex and I'm good at playing soccer. I'm trying to score. I take a shot and I scored. My teammates go to me and say, good job, Alex. When I go home, I tell my mom I scored and we're both proud. Uh, so sometimes feedback I get after we watch all the movies together is how some of the quiet students come out of their shell. Um, during virtual learning, especially uh, virtual learning could be very hard for some kids that are shy. Um, and in one moment in particular in the end of the last school year, there was a student who was very quiet and then really was able to express a lot more and the teacher and even the parents that had seen the screening had, had mentioned that. So I always feel great when that happens for students that are part of this program. Um, I get excited to see their excitement when they see their movies move for the first time. And sometimes you can even hear a little click when they totally get it and they're ready to keep animating the rest of their movie. Um, the students think they're just playing, but there's really a more layered experience going on. As I lead them through the steps of the design process, they're learning executive function and organizational skills. They're learning digital tools that they can utilize in the future, and they're building 21st century skills. At the end of the program, the students each author their own movie, and they see firsthand how to turn an idea into something. Now, you might not know that math plays a big role in our animations, 
but we need to understand the frame rate behind the movies and the number of frames per second. So knowing the frames per second helps us know how many pictures we're gonna to need to create. So the average movie that you would see in the theaters is about 24 frames, is generally 24 frames a second, which means you need 24 pictures for every second of that movie. For 30 seconds, that would be 720 frames. And if we keep calculating up to what is the average uh, length of a movie that you might see, um, that will be just under 130,000 frames. Now the kids get pretty excited. There's always a couple math kids that are trying to calculate with me as I reveal the numbers. Um, and I let them know that we're, uh, and they've never thought of it that way because of when they see a movie, they don't really think about it being made up of individual frames. Uh, we make our movies at 12 frames a second, uh, which is still enough for them to get the illusion of the movie and a little bit more time friendly. We continue to talk through the process of, about the calculations. And for example, that movie that you saw with the fish that was going back and forth in the bowl, one of the sentences was, first they swim to the left. Uh, if that takes about three seconds to say, that would need 36 pictures. So they have to plan out how they're gonna move that fish across the frames in those 36 pictures. So there's some pre-planning that goes on. Um, making art in the virtual environment has its challenges. But this program was actually built for the virtual environment because it's made with virtual tool, it's made with digital tools and it's meant to be seen digitally. Um, this series of workshop does have a prerequisite. The students do need access to a smartphone or a tablet. Sometimes I've seen Kindles work um, to create their animation. And certainly the issue of access to technology is important to me as a teaching artist, which was the motivation why I purchased a number of iPads so that I could bring them to schools. Um, and when we're back in person together, I will do that again um, and continue to bring it to students that don't have access to these technologies. I can teach the program uh, in Zoom or, or Google Meet, depending on what your school requires. Um, and I can teach it third grade and up. Uh, we define a program theme, a theme for your in a residency. I can create a prompt that your students can respond to or I can tailor a prompt to match the, the units that you're doing in the classroom and utilize writing that they do with you. In one school, the students used poems as a springboard into their animation. And in another, I created a prompt to have them tell me something that they were really an expert in. Traditionally, the writing comes first, but uh, I have collaborated with, uh, for example, an ESL classroom where we had the students actually draw the pictures um, and then describe what was happening. And that also helped build their vocabulary skills. So I have a few more examples. I am a kind and positive person. I touch the air, stars, and grass. I see mysterious objects in the sky. I feel worried inside. I understand how frustrating tests can be sometimes. I say a piece of the true meaning of our lives. Hi, my name is Ayana. And I know a lot about basketball. Lots of people play it. Even I do. A basketball hoop is 10 feet tall. Do you play basketball? Different animals live in different parts of the ocean. Even though they are all in different places, all animals in the ocean are connected through a food web. If you are on the bottom of the food web, you affect everyone above you. For example, small organisms called plankton are at the bottom of the food web. They are eaten by small fish that become food for larger fish. There are many factors that can have an effect on the food web, such as overfishing, loss of habitat, and water and plastic pollution. Hi, math is my favorite subject, but I also like physical education. I love relaxing after a long day. I get inspired by new inventions. So I want to become a scientist when I grow up. Thank you for watching. 
<laughs> so thank you for watching those um, movies. Um, at the end of one of my programs in the classroom, a student, a student came up to me and he said, are we going to get a copy of this? Because this is like art. And I said, yes, it is like art. And yes, you'll get a copy. And it's moments like that that I love and inspire me to keep teaching. Um, I love fostering the excitement in the classroom and I learn something from every class I go to. I love the collaborative conversation and what I learn layers into the next class. Um, you can give me a call by, or email me to learn more about the details of the program and to talk about how you think it might fit into what you're doing in the classroom. I can't wait to hear the stories that your students have to tell. Now, if I think of some questions that people ask me, I don't know if we have any questions, Barbara, but I have a few that are often asked. We, we haven't had any questions in the Q&A, so. All right, so one question is, uh, what's the best grade for this program? And I can certainly teach it third grade and up. It's really, age doesn't matter for the program, but I think that grades three through six really thrive in this environment and this, and this uh, process. Mm -hmm. um, another question I get is, what's the best theme? What's the best topic? Um, and I love to work with something that you're using in the classroom because it really enhances what they're learning. It turns them into the teachers. Um, and it just sort of builds on the momentum you have. Uh, I love to, to do the program with poetry because usually the topics are varied and, and interesting and science projects, as you saw from the food web, work really well. Um, the last question I often get is how long are the movies that the kids make? And they're usually 30 to 60 seconds, which doesn't seem like a lot, but remember that's 432 frames or 720 frames. So that's a lot of pictures. <laughs> That's it. it for me. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. That was wonderful. And it was it's I, we're so thrilled to have this program. I think it's really a valuable, uh, uh, valuable residency for students for uh, for a number of reasons, artistically and of course, to complement other areas of the curriculum. Thanks for joining Thank us. You. today. Um, we're going to uh, we have one more. Uh, uh, presentation that wasn't part of our schedule lineup for today, but it's a program uh, we definitely want to tell you about. It is um, it's called Possibilities, and it is presented by the theater department uh, at Fairleigh Dickinson's University School of the Arts, and it's now in its sixth season. This charming 45-minute musical is available for virtual bookings for grades five through eight, and it focuses on the day in the life of a group, a group of high school students attending an in-school career fair. The show promotes individuality, respect, goal setting, and friendship. The students come face to face with their dreams, external pressures, and ultimately their own ability to choose what's right for them. It features classic musical theater songs and dances performed by the FDU theater student actors. The program is free of charge and supported by a generous grant from the Sharp Fund PLD. Virtual shows are going to be available from December 8th through March 7th, uh, and they will you'll see, schools will see those through Vimeo. So there's contact information below. We'll also post that when we post the recorded sessions online. But um, if your school is interested in having this performance come to your school, um, I would recommend reaching out fairly soon. Um, so that's going to conclude our series. Uh, we wanna thank everyone for joining us uh, for showcase one, two, and now three. We hope that uh, you'll uh, bring some of these wonderful artists into your school. And we'd like you to know that we're here if you have questions, or um, if we can help in any way to make that happen. Thank you so much for joining us today.